The course syllabus can be found under the Syllabus and Textbooks tab on Blackboard. Additionally, if you go to my own website, which simply will redirect from my name, uh, you could click on the link for our class, which is right here, section 24, and you would be brought to the same document here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so we can start to look over the syllabus. Uh, this is my contact information here on the left. My name is Professor Slay. It is pronounced like, you know, Santa on a sleigh, which is very fitting considering the weather. Um, no, it's not uh, spelled that way. My office hours are here. These morning office hours, the 8.45 to 9.30 ones on Monday and Wednesday, I am actually in the class lab, CT228, and you're welcome to, this is discussed on, on my page too, uh, but you're welcome to come in the morning even if you just want to use the computers as opposed to, to having questions. And I'm certainly always open to scheduling other times with you outside of my office hours. So we meet on Wednesdays in 228, and our class is a little bit like, well, I, I like to call it like two and a half classes in one, because we have all of the Microsoft Office applications, Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint. We also have um, a portion of the class where we talk about computer concepts, things like computer security, how software is developed, how to purchase a computer, operating systems, uh, and we make a small or website. Uh, so we've got the word processing, the computer concepts, and then that little half a class of making the, the small website. This section is a hybrid course. That means that we meet less often. And uh, I expect you to do more work outside of the classroom in order to be successful in the class. It is essential to have access to a computer with the internet and Microsoft Office applications. Uh, later on in the syllabus, I'm going to talk about the college labs and other options for software, uh, but you should know starting out that you need to have access to a computer with Internet and Microsoft Office just to be able to be successful in the class uh, because a lot of the work that you would be doing uh, if we had been meeting a second time during the week, you will be doing at home. We have three textbooks, two are books that you purchase, and the third is a website that is available free. Uh, you don't need any CDs or codes or anything like that with your textbook, so you're welcome to purchase electronic copies or used copies or whatever uh, works out for you. If I flip back to Blackboard, you can see a picture of our textbooks. This is the Microsoft Office book. It is spiral bound. Uh, and this is the concepts book. It's much thinner. Uh, I know these prices sound insane, but there is a bundled package in the bookstore. I believe the two are, here it is, $114 new or $85 used. Of course, that's in the bookstore, and you're welcome to look for the textbook in other places as well. Uh, this is the website that we'll be using for the project if you want to bookmark that. You don't need to print it out. Plenty of students use it online, and they're happy with that. Uh, but if you want a printed copy, you can do that at home. Uh, you will also need some way to store your files, either a USB drive or some sort of established storage account, uh, like cloud storage, like a um, Windows Live ID or something like that. You'll also need two Scantron forms. The 882E is actually the most common Scantron form. They sell them in the bookstore as well as a vending machine in CA. When we get close to the midterm and final, I can bring one in as an example. Okay, so I mentioned that we would start talking about software. 
So we know that we have to have access to the internet, a computer with internet access uh, routinely outside of the classroom. If you don't have a computer that you can use at home, there are computer labs on all of the NOVA campuses. I've placed a link in the syllabus here to bring you to a website that discusses the hours for computer labs on the NOVA campuses. You might find that hours on a different campus are more suitable to your schedule, so I would certainly check that out. You also need access to Microsoft Office. Uh, you could purchase traditional software that's installed on your machine which, as it says here, is $140 approximately. Uh, there's also a 30-day trial, but since I wrote this syllabus, this actually just came out a few days ago, uh, Microsoft and the Virginia Community College System have made Office 365, there's a little typo there, available free for student use. So you should have received that email to your VCCS account just in the last uh, week here. In fact, I believe it was just on uh, this past Sunday, the the 19th, an email talking about how to sign up for a uh, free account with Office 365, which would give you access to the applications that we're using in the course as long as you're a NOVA student. It's a cloud-based um, usage, so you would need internet access for that as well. Uh, I do need you to submit your documents in Microsoft Office file formats. You should not be using anything older than Office 2007 to complete your assignments in the class. You also should always have your MyNova ID and password so that you can use the computers in the classroom. It is not at all acceptable to use your own computer when we're doing an in-class activity or during our testing on the, the computers. The college has a number of uh, tutorials or assistance available. One is a software package through Atomic Learning. Uh, these are video tutorials that uh, address Microsoft Office and actually when we get into access I'll point you to some of these specific tutorials. I uh, have found, well, a lot of students have told me that they find them useful. They're also really broken up into topics so you don't end up watching like a 45 minute video because you wanted to see some five minute task in the center. Uh, so it's very well indexed. There's a tutoring center and the college also has a site where they give tutorials on use of Blackboard. I do not spend a lot of time in the class talking about how to use Blackboard, although I certainly realize that some of the students in 115 might be new to NOVA and need uh, some resources there, so I would visit that link. Moving on to the grading section of the syllabus, you'll see that 55% of your grade comes from testing, while the remaining 45% is from assignments. Uh, these assignments will really predominantly be done at home, while the testing is done in the classroom. For the midterm and final, you will have one portion that is hands-on, on the midterm, you'll be using Microsoft Excel, which is a spreadsheet application. On the final, you'll be using Microsoft Access, which is a database. And in addition to the hands-on component, you will also have a portion that is, you know, traditional objective multiple choice questions. So the midterm and final both consist of these two portions, one portion hands-on using the software and one portion asking about computer concepts with multiple choice questions. For the midterm, if you are unable to make the scheduled date, you need to talk to me uh, about that and have some sort of documentation as to your absence. There is no makeup for the final exam. So when we get to the schedule tab, please definitely make a note of the final exam date. There are five quizzes in the class, and I drop your lowest quiz grade at the end of the semester. The testing is not cumulative. The final exam is only on the 
you know, final portion of the course. The midterm is just the the first half, with the exception of material discussed on the quizzes. If I have addressed uh, an item on the quiz, it will not show up again on the midterm or final as a traditional question, although it may be posed as an extra credit question. For the midterm and final, if you are absent, uh, you need to let me know in advance. If you do let me know before the date of a quiz, I will let you take a makeup in the testing center, um, you know, two throughout the semester without even knowing your reason. It doesn't doesn't matter. Um, so that's the the policy for the makeup quizzes. Moving on to that 45% of the class that is from assignments. We have 10 lab exercises. We're going to do the first one here in the classroom so that we're clear about how they're submitted and what we're, we're doing. And we're going to do uh, one or two others in the classroom as time allows. Uh, but often you will be doing the labs at home. That's the portion of the class that is mostly moved online as our, our hybrid class. Uh, you'll also have five homework assignments, just like the five quizzes, I will drop your lowest homework grade. And then we will make this small website, uh, which is 15% of your grade, and it will focus on a topic, uh, a topic that relates to the course. As far as late work, uh, for the homework assignments, I will accept late work with a 25% penalty. With the project, it's the same thing, 20% uh, penalty uh, for the first week. So I accept late work with a 20% penalty one day from the, uh, excuse me, one week from the original submission deadline. The labs really don't accept late for two reasons. One, the testing isn't cumulative, so it's a little silly to be doing the lab after you've been tested on it. And the other thing is you'll notice the labs are only 1% each, so dividing that 1% up for partial credit or whatnot just gets to be a little bit ridiculous with the fractions of a, a point. Here's our withdrawal date as well as the, the drop date. Uh, I don't take attendance uh, as part of the grade. You'll notice when we talked about what made up that 100% of the grade, there was not a line that said attendance is X percent. Uh, but in a hybrid course, it is really important to not miss class because you're missing uh, quite a lot of material. You could be missing quizzes. Uh, sometimes I've given extra credit pop quizzes in classes. In fact, I did that twice last semester. Just decided, hey, let's take a, a surprise pop quiz, maybe four or five questions, and I'll add the, the score from that to your last pop quiz. Uh, obviously, if you were not present, you would miss that, and you wouldn't be able to make up any sort of extra credit activity that was given in your absence. If you have an accommodation form, you should certainly give that to me uh, at your earliest convenience since I need to get that before any accommodations could be made. Uh, the academic integrity section is important to take a look at. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of academic integrity situations in 115, often with the labs. I do regularly have a, not regularly, but it certainly happens one or two students a semester submitting other students' labs um, instead of their own. You know, you should do your own work. I, I have yet to meet a student that wasn't capable of doing the work in this class. You know, it's just a, a matter of putting the time in. Uh, I will report any instance of academic integrity. Uh, so we definitely should be doing our own unique work. Uh, there's a conduct section here which just discusses the fact that if there, there was a conduct issue after a warning I would ask you to leave uh, and if you had been asked to leave you might be missing quizzes or other activity during that class and you know correspondingly missing credit for that.
there is some information here on emergency preparedness that you should certainly familiarize yourself with. Uh, we could have situations where we need to evacuate either the building or leave our classroom. An example of a time when we would leave the classroom but not necessarily leave the building would be something like a severe weather incident, maybe a tornado, where it wouldn't be safe to leave the building, but we still couldn't re uh, remain in our room in CC228 because we're on an exterior wall and we have a... Uh, large window in there. In that case we'd go to 203 or 207. I will obviously remember the room numbers if we had an emergency um, and they have placards above the door that indicate that they are severe weather shelter locations. Uh, we could also have a need to evacuate the classroom in that occurrence just to, to be aware that we should take what we can relatively quickly. You know, in an IT class, there's a tendency to finish up that last step or two in your lab and make sure that you've saved your file and ejected your USB properly and logged off the machine. And, um, you know, in, a, in an emergency, we only have a minute or two to gather our things before we would need to evacuate. Obviously, you'd want to make sure that you took your phone, uh, car keys, money, you know, anything that could help you get off campus if you were not able to return to the classroom. You should consider signing up for NOVA alerts. Uh, NOVA alerts send you text messages and emails to inform you of college closures or delayed openings. If we do have a closure, uh, we will continue online. There's just too much material to not uh, continue. So when you do hear about a closure, I know it's an exciting time when we um, know that we don't have to come in and all of that, but we should also make sure that we check Blackboard for any material that we might need to complete online before our next in-person meeting. Also, if you have a chance in the classroom, I would encourage you to get contact information from another classmate. In case you have quick questions, you could certainly write to me, uh, but you know, there's other times when getting in touch with a classmate might be more useful. Here is an outline for the course, and then we have a more detailed schedule that follows this. The schedule is here in the syllabus file, which again is under syllabus and textbooks, or this tab. But you can also always access the schedule by clicking on the schedule tab at Blackboard. And this gives you um, a schedule that I will keep routinely updated. So if we need to make any changes, this is where I will be moving things around and I will certainly highlight our changes so we're aware that something is different. You'll also see underneath this discussions of what I mean when I'm saying reading IP, that's the in practice, the spiral bound book, or CE. Uh, so you see that breakdown here, as well as the publisher's websites. Sometimes I ask you, in fact, I think this is coming up, where I ask you to go to the CE website and, you know, look at something or look at a certain animation, you know watch animations mobile OS on the CE websites, you would say, oh, this is the website for that, where I would go and look up the animations. We've also included a link to all of the data files for the textbook. When we have labs, they usually give you the data file right there, but in case you had a problem downloading that or you wanted to do additional activities for practice, you could get to the data files from here. And this is just a breakdown explaining the topics of our lab assignments that are mentioned in the schedule. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and I'm going to start a second video where I discuss the work that you need to complete for next week.